With the Razer Ripsaw HD, you can stream your games with ease in 1080p. Oh, did I even mention you can play your games at 4K at the same time for all under $200? Let me go ahead and show you. Setup of the Ripsaw is very easy. All you have to do is plug the Ripsaw into your PC, console, plug your console into the Ripsaw, and then HDMI into the monitor. And you're done. Let's head over to the test station and give this thing a whirl. All right, so now we have our Ripsaw physically plugged in. Let's go ahead and set it up inside of OBS. All right, so now we have our OBS set up and open. Let's go ahead and go down to this plus symbol underneath our sources to set up our Ripsaw. We're gonna wanna do a video capture device and then we're gonna add a new one. So we're gonna call this Ripsaw HD. And okay. And then what you wanna do from devices, you wanna come down here and go to Ripsaw HD HDMI and boom, there we go. We just can leave it and it's all set. Now, as you can see, we are actually capturing our video. Let's go ahead and capture our audio. So now you'll wanna go back down to this plus button Go to audio input capture, call this Ripsaw HD audio, and then make sure that you find the one that says Ripsaw HDMI and not just regular Ripsaw microphone. Otherwise, this is gonna capture the input on the back of the bit, not the actual HDMI sound. You wanna click on this, click okay, and then you wanna come over to where it says audio mixer, go to advanced properties and make sure that it's on monitoring and output. Now we can hear that it's actually capturing sound. Now keep in mind too, if you do decide to download the actual software, there are some things you can do inside of the software that'll actually impact the actual hardware itself. So if you go to your Razer Synapse software and click on the actual Ripsaw HD, you can actually control different volumes here. So you can control the HDMI, PC output volume, the microphone, and also master overall volume as well. So this is kind of a neat little tool again, in case you want to decrease some of that because it sounds a little bit too much, or if you want to increase it, you can actually do it on the fly with this device, which is pretty nice, especially if you don't have something that actually gives you audio controls via faders or different channels. And that's all you have to do. One thing I would recommend doing is actually you can go ahead and group these two together. If you do that, it just makes it a little bit easier. So that way you can go ahead and call this rip saw. And then if you want to, let's say if you want to go ahead and just stop capturing it, you can just click on it. It'll disable the actual audio source and it'll disable the video source as well too. So, but it's really, really that simple. Let's go ahead and recap. We set up inside OBS. We grouped it together to make it easier to manage inside of OBS. We also learned how to manage the audio and stuff like that with the actual program itself. And that's it. Now you can actually game in 4K and stream in 1080p. Pretty awesome if you ask me. Let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Do I even need to mention that demo? Ah. So pros of this device, 4K pass through, having the ability to stream in 1080p and it still play in 4K 60 is amazing for next gen consoles and to experience new games in a very beautiful way. Mic and auxiliary input, having the ability to be able to add voiceover and add in other audio sources to the Ripsaw directly is a phenomenal feature to have. Great colors. In my research, I found that this actually offers really beautiful colors it's actually a little bit better than some of its other competitors. Software is not required. You can still use this without actually having any Razer software installed on the computer, which is actually pretty awesome. Solid build. This actually uses USB type C, it feels sturdy, it looks great. It's actually a little bit slimmer than some of the other cards that are out there right now. Now let's look at some of the cons that are not such a great display of the features that it offers. No 4K capture. This was released last year. It would have been amazing to have that 4K capture ability, but for under $200, it's still not a complete loss. Adding separate audio track in OBS. It's kind of weird because I've used other cards. I've never had to add a separate audio track to get my clean, clear audio at the right time with no lag. And I had to do it with this card, which was a little weird. The volume is kind of quiet. Even having the volume maxed out in the actual app and in my system, I still realized it was a little bit quiet, which might be kind of hard for other streamers to adjust for properly. So what are our final thoughts? Overall for 199, this is very competitive for the performance and power that it packs into its sleek, beautiful design. If you are looking for a capture card, I would seriously consider looking into this one. And that's about it. If you guys enjoyed this setup, please give us a thumbs up. It really helps us out. And if you want more content curated for content creators, go ahead and give us that sub and head over to pipeline.gg. Happy streaming.